Hey guys, it's Bromley from Empire Barbell, and today I want to talk to you about one of the most brutal, most effective training protocols I've ever gone through. And one of the things that actually solidified the role of squatting is such a fundamentally important part of any strength training program, and that's the Super Squats program. Now, for any of you that are uh, relatively new to the field or having you know dug a little bit deeper in some of the literature around, uh, there's a company called Iron Mind. Iron Mind makes a lot of uh, grip products, a bunch of Olympic lifting training tools, a bunch of, they, they have a really strong niche and uh, some of the more like classical and kind of odd lifts. And uh, they're really present in a lot of the strongman stuff. Now, Iron Mind has a special place in my heart because a lot of the literature, a lot of the books they put out were uh, either written by Randall Strawson himself, who's the guy that runs Iron Mind, or were written from, uh, were written by some of the more older, weightlifting and uh, let's say muscle building scholars of the 60s and 70s. They pull a lot of stuff from guys like John McCallum who wrote for Muscle Rags in the 60s and 70s. And what you see is a lot of really foundational, really kind of simple training protocols that are just, they work, they're very proven, they've been around for a long time and they existed back in the day when nutrition wasn't quite as dialed in as it is today and when gear wasn't as widely universally available as it is today. So. You can really pull a lot from those types of uh, you know old simple. It reminds me a lot of what Josh Bryan does with his you know Jailhouse Strong brand, where it's like okay, you got guys in jail that can get big and jacked off really no equipment and really shitty diets. What are they doing that the rest of us aren't doing? So while it's important to know the science and really understand you know how periodization works and how these advanced topics like manipulation of volume and intensity work, sometimes it really can be as simple as picking a few basic foundational exercises busting your ass on them and progressing linearly. And that's the beauty of a lot of what Iron Mind puts out. The feel of a lot of that stuff is, uh, it, it's kind of a formal approach or it feels a little more fo uh, formal uh, while addressing a lot of kind of informal training structures. Where on the, on the one hand, usually you're, you're taking bro stuff that you picked out at 24 hour fitness. You know, some guys like, oh yeah, I like doing 21s because they make my arms grow. On the other end, you'll get, you know, what came out of the Soviet sports system which is a lot of very calculated, very um, you know, scientifically evaluated principles for how you get bigger and stronger over time or how you perform better, especially in the case of Olympic lifting and powerlifting and things like that. So where those bridges kind of come together, that's where I find the best training is. You have to follow really good sound scientific training principles so your progress is predictable, but at the same time you can't neglect the kind of raw instinctive intensity that comes with really hard basic foundational training. So that's my rant on that. To get into it, super squats, long story short, super squats is a very minimalistic basic program where the backbone of it is squatting. You work up to one hard set every day of an all out set of 20. Now, okay, 20 reppers suck, people don't like endurance, you know, unloading the weights is cardio, right? Well, this isn't just a quick pump set of 20 with 135. This is something that is ostensibly a 10 to 15 rep max that's done rest pause style. Now squats are very unique because you can recover at the top. If you think about a bench press, you press out to the top, you're gonna fatigue each second that you hold it at the top. Squats, you can hang out with the bar all day because mechanically you're so very strong in this locked out position. You can breathe, 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 recover, and then hit another one. So we capitalize on that to do what really comes out to be the same as any type of prolonged set in bodybuilding, like a drop set or rest pause set or force reps. So you, you take something like a comfortable 10 rep max and you do it for 20. And it sounds like, oh, well, that's stupid, but it works, it's doable. There's a lot written in the book about the type of vis visualization that has to go in the type of commitment, you'll realize that you wanna quit, not because you physically can't do it, but because you feel like you're about to get crushed and you have to breathe deep, deep breaths and keep gutting it through. So in addition to that max 20 rep set, you're also doing other really foundational compound exercises that work, behind the neck presses, bent rows, stiff leg deadlifts. Just if you were to pick the best compound movement for each body part, that's in it. So it's the same workout three days a week, uh, two if three days a week is too much, and it's a very simple linear progression, meaning every time you come in, you add five pounds, that's it. So the volume aspect isn't quite as important because the volume only changes minimally workout to workout. It's very intensity driven. 
each week you're gonna be using a little more weight and the effort you put out is gonna be much, much greater and that's what's gonna cause you to grow. So this program hinges off a couple of assumptions. One is that squats are life. Now that's something I agree with, mainly because I ran this in my early days and I, I still take a lot of principles to this nowadays, but I saw how absolutely viciously your body would improve with something as simple as frequent weekly high rep balls out squat. It just does. Now, there's a couple reasons for that. One, it's compound movement, right? We all know the, uh, the fundamental principle that compound movements are superior to isometric movements as far as um, bang for your buck. Uh, if you want, if you only have one exercise, you want to make your upper body grow, it's going to be a press. If you only have one exercise, you want your upper back to grow, it's going to be a row. Uh, same thing, squatting for legs, deadlifting for your back, your, your upper back, your hips. Uh, that, that's just the way it goes. So squatting is unique in that it hits a shit ton of muscles all at once, yet recoverability tends to be a bit higher than other lifts, meaning you can squat a lot more frequently and still recover than a lot of other lifts. Deadlifting specifically, uh, deadlifting, call it what you want, it, whether it destroys your erectors, makes your lower back achy, or if you want to you know, call it CNS burnout, deadlifts are very, very, very hard to recover from. Presses might be easier to recover from, but typically, even if your nervous system doesn't burn out, you still see overuse issues in the shoulders, elbows, and that's something you gotta, you gotta avoid. If you come in with a good solid squat foundation, you don't have any mobility issues, uh, you have reasonable flexibility, and you learn how to do it the right way, your knees and hips will quickly get bulletproof. You'll be able to handle that load, and you're not gonna get a lot of the same overuse issues you get with other movements. Olympic lifters will do some type of squatting every day sometimes twice a day you're looking at 12 sessions a week for advanced olympic lifters all of which involve some type of squatting you don't typically hear about only lifters walking around with achy knees and and sore hips uh that's not to say they don't work hard long story short squatting is money it hits a lot of muscles uh, more intense efforts are shown to increase more testosterone post-workout meaning the harder you work in the gym the bigger the surge of recovery is going to be afterwards so you take something like squatting, it's already difficult, already hits a lot of muscle groups. On top of that, you do hard squatting where you're really, really pushing it to your absolute limit. And afterwards, your body gets flooded with hormones that are just there by design to get you to grow and get stronger. When you pair that with other quality compound exercises that do a lot of work around the rest of your body by themselves, it's a gold mine. It just, it works so well and it's so simple. And I would argue that foundationally, every lifter should run through something like this at some point. So they see the value of simple effort with quality movement selection as being the main driving forces of progress. So squatting is life. Uh, I live and die by that. And this actually came it was about 20 years ago, I came across this. And this came in an era where, where squatting was kind of widely being sold as the king of all movements. I mean, Jesse Morunde, I had a, shirt, a Jesse Morunde shirt that had his uh, likeness on it and said next to it, squat more. Reason being, you had a problem, his advice, squat more. Well, you know, my, uh, my lifts aren't going up, squat more. I'm having trouble stone loading, squat more. My overhead stapled, squat more. And it had a very simple common sense uh, wisdom to it that I really abide by, that um, it's a backbone. You increase your ability to handle weight loaded through your spine, your legs get bigger and stronger, that means everything else goes up. From your ability to drive into a bar on an overhead press, from your ability to walk with weight, from your ability to load. It's just, it's such a magical movement and uh, not enough people take it quite as seriously. So premise, squats are life. Now going beyond that, breathing squats, uh, probably one of the most painful things you'll ever do. So we have good movement selection in a squat, right? It's a lot of muscle groups. It translates to what we're trying to do uh, athletically or, or uh, competitively. Um, it's easy to recover from, which is a big one, meaning we can train it more frequently. So we already have a lot of good boxes checked. If we take that and we add into it intensity, the way a bodybuilder would intensify a set of bicep curls by resting 30 seconds and going again, or dropping the weight and going again. So now we're adding in these advanced techniques that just push your ability to work so much farther. A breathing squat is basically a rest pause squat. You do a, a rep, you come up, three deep breaths. You want to breathe like a steam engine. Now the idea is that, uh, I don't know if any of you have ever done any type of exercises like a front carry or a Conan's wheel where the weight sits on you and it gets hard to breathe. 
You're moving those breathing muscles, you're getting a rib cage to expand and contract. It destabilizes your upper back while also allowing you to recover. But those muscles, those supportive muscles just get worked so hard. But in addition to that, you're driving in oxygen, you're allowing your body to recover so you can hammer out that next rep. So a set of 20, you think, okay, 20 reps, maybe what is that, 45 seconds a minute? No, a set of 20 is about two and a half minutes if you do it the right way. Now this allows you to increase training density. Those 20 reps, if you break them up into reasonable sets, would be you know, 10 or 15 minutes of work spaced out with rest period. Not this time. This time, the breathing squats condenses that into two and a half minutes of straight suffering. So what do we get? We get more fatigue, more local fatigue. We actually get a shit ton of general fatigue because each rep that goes on, you're getting into more and more of like a cardiovascular deficit, right? So local fatigue in the muscles, general fatigue, as far as your, you know, uh, secondary or longer uh, energy systems are getting taxed. We have the intensity, just sheer effort, which we've already linked to, uh, you know, an increased recovery environment and better results workout to workout. Uh, and it's painful. It's, it's a gut check. If you think, if you're one of these people that power lifts are the strong man, and you like to tell people how tough it is and it's not for anyone, you are sorely fucking mistaken. I get into this discussion all the time. Any, if you want to talk about the worst things you can do, the hardest sports you can compete in, there is an intensity component and an endurance component, meaning you're going as hard as you can and for longer than you would like to. Powerlifting is over very quick. Strongman, what the longest you're going to go is a minute, maybe a minute and a half, and usually you gas out before that even comes. When you take something that pushes that endurance threshold, you're talking about really shitty bodybuilding sets. In fact, a bodybuilding workout by itself, miserable. You're talking about CrossFit workouts. You're talking about things like ultra marathons and cycling, where there's an it's a race, there's an intensity component, but it just goes on and on and on. You're going to experience this, okay? You're going to be to rep number 13, you're gonna know objectively that you can finish, but you're gonna have those demons on your shoulders just talking into your ear telling you to rack the bar. Um, it is a really good gut check so that in the future when you suffer, you, you'll remind yourself of that set and you'll be able to say, it could be worse, I could be in the middle of a 20 rep breathing uh, squat set right now. So most people, most trainees in this day and age do not push themselves on certain key movements the way they should be. I mean, most don't. And this is a good refresher for how much you're leaving on the table by dialing that effort back and abstaining from really, really hard effort. So, okay, squats are life. We're incorporating breathing squats as a type of uh, you know extended rest pause set. And then we have the simplicity. Now this is a big one from the programming aspect. Simplicity, I think of that as minimizing the number of variables we train. and. It's not that that's you know, mathematically somehow the best way to structure a workout or that you can show that that's gonna provide the best results. If I come up with my mind in some perfect program for whatever somebody's trying to do, there's gonna be a lot of complex moving pieces. But the more complex a workout is, that means the more likely shit can go sideways. You can miss reps, you can you know, overestimate a set, you can, um, you know, by trying to do one thing, you end up interfering with something else. The more moving pieces actually ends up being detrimental to, to overall progress in my experience. So we know that if we manipulate one, maybe two variables at a time, we can get predictable progress. So why complicate it? Take this very basic skeleton of a workout, add five pounds each time, make sure that each time you come in ready to work harder than the time before, and you progress and you run it until a few weeks have gone by and you're satisfied with the progress or until you get stagnant and then give yourself a week to clear out, do something else or even reset and run it again. Uh, simplicity is something you should all be chasing in your programs. This one, like I said, it's just five pounds each time. It's a linear progression. That means the only variable that's changing is intensity in the sense of weight and it's intensifying so slightly that you almost don't even notice the changes. So that's a, that's a really big benefit to this program. Keep it simple, stupid. So if I'm gonna outline the basic workout, it's twice, a, uh, two to three times a week, depending on what you can handle. Uh, the main movements, I'm paraphrasing. If you want, you can look it up, you can find the exact workout, but this is from my memory. Uh, I believe squats started off, which is rough. I actually had to put squats at the end because after I squatted, I was just incapable of doing anything else. But you get through your warm-ups, you hit one set of 20. 
As a ballpark, I would start out at about 65% to get you used to it. That's something like a 15 to 20 rep max, uh, but bank on doing this two to three times a week, five pounds, that's 15 pound jumps a week if you do it right, uh, for however many, six weeks, 10 weeks, however long you can run it. So I would start about 65, maybe 70% if you're feeling froggy, one set of 20. Now here's the key, do not rack the fucking bar until you hit 20. That's it, stay in that rack as long as you have to. If you, if you take a full minute in between each reps, you're still living the spirit of the set. So commit to it, gut it out. That's what's gonna make you good. That's the backbone of all of this. From there, you move on to various other movements, uh, quality movement, most of these movements you guys don't even do. So behind the neck press, that's one of my favorite for shoulder development. Uh, what happens with the behind the neck press is you're contracted at the top, you're stretched at the bottom. That means the delt doesn't get any blood in. So you'll notice if you do high rep behind the neck press, your shoulders are gonna burn like they've never burned before. Uh, also, I, I believe it hits your rear delts, maybe your traps a little bit more than front presses do. So a lot of you guys that just front press, your front delt's gonna get really imbalanced. So this is a good way to round out your shoulder girdle. It causes your upper body to grow like crazy. It's a fantastic movement. This is real simple, it's just three sets of 12. Uh, a bench press of some sort. Uh, I would go with like a close grip bench. I believe they prescribe just regular benches. Similar three sets, 10 to 12 reps, nothing magic. Now for the rest of your body, bent rows, I've already said bent rows are one of the best upper back movements you can do because they hit so much more of the rest of your body. They're, they're, it's, it's just a fantastic fucking movement. Uh, bent rows should be a staple in anybody's uh, arsenal. If you're gonna do pendlay rows, that's fine. It'll keep you strict. Um, fight the negative though. Don't just let it fall to the ground. Pull up forcefully, touch, let the bar come down under control. I prefer to float the bar because it's harder. It's more taxing in your midsection. It gets you to reinforce being bent over with a tight brace, which we all know how important that is, under a load for an extended period of time. Bent rows, same thing, three sets, 12 or so reps. Uh, stiff leg deadlifts. Now here's the thing, you're not gonna do this program and try to deadlift heavy, like a heavy conventional deadlift in the midst of the program. That will not work, you'll burn yourself out. Stiff leg deadlifts or even Romanian deadlifts are a good substitute. These are what I think of as like a bodybuilder's deadlift. It's gonna be more emphasizing muscle growth less emphasizing the nervous system beatdown that comes with really aggressive strength training. Hypertrophy is gonna be a big driving force of strength here. There's more muscle growth than strength specific work. That doesn't mean you're not gonna get stronger. You're absolutely going to get stronger. It's just less strength specific. So stiff leg deads and uh, I, I would say specifically Romanian deads, you can recover from a little bit more, especially the volume, and you'll be able to get these out on a daily basis without it absolutely destroying you. Start light on these, give yourself time to adapt between the squats and stiff leg deads. Uh, and then take liberal jumps session to session as you feel comfortable. Reps are still high. Now I know none of you are regularly deadlifting in the 12 rep range. You should be, okay? It's great for growth, it's great for capacity. Uh, it's great to reinforce those weaknesses that you neglect when you just go in and do a heavy pull. You can't keep your back straight. Well, if every time you go 90% up, your back's gonna round. Your back never has an opportunity to stay straight. So those muscles fall by the wayside, you end up just hanging on your erectors. That's how you get injured and put up shitty performances even if you don't get injured. This gives you the opportunity to dial in posture, to get your shoulders back, to lock in your abdominals, to feel over and over and over what muscles contribute to the hips coming back and the hips coming forward, which is the crux of a deadlift. This is a great way to deload from regular heavy ass pulling that I know a lot of you were doing. Uh, I wanna say on top of this, I know pullovers are put in here, Pullovers are a great old school movement. Uh, they work your lats a bit. Uh, they stretch your rib cage. Uh, I wanna say they hit the serratus right here. Those are the fingers you see on really jack bodybuilders. Um, you just lay on a bench, let the dumbbell come out. Right here, as you're, as you're laying down, everything stretches. So I, the idea is to broaden out your rib cage. I don't know if it actually does make sense. Some guys swear by it. You don't see people do this a lot anymore though. This is a good finisher on either an upper back or even a chest day. It actually stretches out your pecs as well. And then besides that, the only thing I would add in is uh, some type of sit-up uh, or some type of abdominal movement. It can be a bracing movement, can be a GHD sit-up, can be a leg raise, a total bar, anything to get some work in your abdominals because that's going to help accelerate the rigidness in your midsection you need to get through these squats later on. But also so that when you do come back to heavy pulling, you want your midsection strong and dialed in. I mean, ab work should be year-round anyways. Uh, and there you have it. That's about as bare bones as it gets. Three sets of, of 10 to 12 on everything, one set of 20 on squats, 
do that twice a week, add five pounds on everything every time you do it. it. Does not get more simple than that. Now the thing is, if you follow it the way it's written, if you commit yourself to it and don't make a bunch of dumbass training decisions on your own, stick to this program, run it for weeks before you decide to manipulate it. See what it is about this program that makes you bigger and stronger over time before you decide to screw with it. I promise you, you'll grow. There are no two ways about it. You just will. Your squat will go up. Your endurance and capacity will go up. Your upper body's going to grow like a weed. That's the thing they don't tell you. You don't need to throw in isolation work. This is compound city right here. You're getting the best of all worlds. Uh, and this is going to lead you with a lot of foundational physical abilities. I mean, this you call this off-season training. This is going to lead you with a bunch of uh, physical attributes that you did not have going into it, which is just if you decide to actually periodize this, say run this for two months, then actually go into a more comp uh, competition oriented strength and, and power development technique oriented type of block, you're just gonna, you're gonna grow like a weed. It's gonna be ridiculous because you have all of this new muscle, you have uh, all of this new uh, capacity as far as your energy systems are concerned. Your ability to handle a load is just gonna be amazing compared to when you started. And when you take that, when you take that, it's like the, the clay that we start with. We're just adding mass, we're adding materials to work with. And then when you start scraping away and refining it, you know, you start adding in the competition groove and you start refining technique and then you start to get a little more strength specific and you worry a little more about your nervous system and moving at a certain tempo and keeping the bar speed in a certain area. You start to, to chip away, you start to carve away that clay until at the end of it, you have a fully formed competitive athlete. And that is the crux of periodization. But I like this because A, it works, B, it's simple, C, it's really, really hard, and D, it fucking works. So this is my review. The first time I ran this, I was a kid, probably 17, 18. I remember the first time I did 300 on a squat for 20 reps. It was one of the hardest things I'd ever done. And it was also one of the most I would, it was also one of the times I was the most proudest that I got through it. The number sounded good, but it was also the effort I had to put in. It was one of the most validating things ever. And you will feel the difference when you leave that workout and you spend the rest of the day trying to recover, trying to do anything, trying to get dressed, take a shower, walk up and down stairs. You feel like you got hit by a bus. And that's the sign that you really tax yourself in a substantial way. That's how you know you're going to grow. You can take that information in the future when you run other programs to really get an honest evaluation. People that think they're overtrained, they're under-recovered. Run through something like this, see what being under-recovered feels like. Uh, the only thing to add on this is do not try and run this in a calorie deficit. You need all of the calories to run this. This will eat you up. Think of it like an old school Smolov, right? It's high frequency, high intensity squatting. Um, you need all the calories, you just do. Protein, yes, but more important than that, you need a shit ton of carbs and fats. This is actually attached to, to the old school go mat approach, gallon of milk a day. I absolutely did that when I ran this. If you're not lactose intolerant, that's an option. If you are, just find other foods that are carb dense that aren't gonna destroy your stomach. Um, but like I said, run this for a minimum of six weeks, get back to me. I promise every single one of you will be better than when you started. Leave your questions or comments in the comment section. Remember to subscribe because I need followers. The faster we grow this following, the more info, the more content I can put out on a more regular basis. I wanna put out as much good content as I can for you guys because there's so much garbage out there. Um, and that's it. Uh, like I said, if you have a question, leave it. And until next time, it's Bromley Empire Barbell. I'll see you.